Hello everyone, it is EA Copen, and this is the Broke Author's Guide to Book Covers. After my first video, I asked a couple friends what types of videos they'd like to see me do in the future, and the number one response was formatting. Unfortunately, I actually really hate formatting, so that's gonna have to wait for a later episode when I actually have to do it for a book. I'll just record what I'm doing and I'll upload it then. This week's episode is about book covers. Book covers are a super important part of your publishing package. Probably the most important part when it comes to indie publishing. A lot of new authors have the same sorts of questions. Where do I find a cover artist? What should I expect to pay? What should I put on my cover? How do I even talk to a cover artist if I don't know the first thing about art? Back when I first started publishing, these are the same questions that I had. And people were able to kind of walk me through the steps, but I really wish a video like this had existed back then. So that's why I'm making this. Like I said before, your book cover is super important. Probably the most important part of your book package. Readers are going to see your cover before they ever see anything else, before they see your blurb, before they see what the story is about, before they even click on the product page. It is the very first impression you get with a reader, and you have to make it a good one. Readers will judge a book by its cover. So what makes a good cover? That's going to vary from genre to genre, but I'm going to talk about my process, how I learned what makes a good cover for the genre that I write in, and it's virtually the same process for any genre. My process involves scrolling through some Amazon product pages and putting together a mood board. So I'm going to show you some things using my computer screen. Okay, so as you can see, we are on an Amazon product page. One thing you'll notice that I am incognito, um, which means that Amazon uses my search history to kind of suggest things to me. So being in incognito mode is going to give sort of an unbiased look at the search result. The product page that we're on is actually for KF Breen's Born in Fire. One of the reasons why I actually chose this book um, is because of the topic that we're going to research for uh, book covers is going to be female lead urban fantasy, which is a huge genre with lots of different little niches. But for the purpose of this, we're going to be looking at sort of the action female lead urban fantasy with a strong romance subplot, which I know she writes. So she also has decent covers and consistently ranks really high. We can notice a few things about her cover right off. But before we get to that point, let's go down here. These are the book categories that she has this book listed in. I can see that this particular book is ranking really high in those categories, and so it's selling really well. Now, in order to talk about categories, I'd have to make a whole different video. But for right now, let's just focus on the fact that this book ranks really high in all of these categories. And so she must be doing something right, right? So to get to the top 100 books in any category, we're going to click on these links here. Now let's focus on werewolves and shifters because right now I'm writing a book series that has a female lead and focuses on werewolves. So let's look at those covers. Now here is a great resource. We have the top 50 covers on the very first page. And then if we click to the next page, we'll get 50 more covers. So we basically have access to the top 100 covers in this genre. And what we can do is we can look at all these covers sort of side by side. We can put together a sort of mood board, a listing or an image that has all of these together. And from that, we should be able to pull out some of the common characteristics. But we're going to focus on indie books, which means they're independently published, 
and books that consistently stay in the top 100. How do I know that they consistently stay in the top 100? Because probably once every two or three weeks, I go through this process. I go and I click on different categories that I'm writing in or considering writing in, and I just kind of watch and, and look and make a mental snapshot of what is where and how it's doing. How long does something stay in the top 100? You can tell that something does really well if it stays in the top 100 for a long time. So like this book was published April 7th, 2019. It's been almost a year and this book is still number one in its category. Not only that, but it's number one at full price. So we know it's not just doing well just because it's discounted. Obviously, BR King Solver has done something right. And it's probably a fair amount to do with the cover. The cover is definitely getting people to click on it. Okay, so after about 15, 20 minutes, I pulled together these images. Now I just kind of threw them into a frame that is on the website Canva, which is free, but you don't have to do that. You can do it in paint or any other program that you have. But here's 12 of the ones that I liked. Most of them are um, indies. Some of them are bigger, some of them are smaller. I tried to pick from different uh, levels of income, but all of them are in the top 100. And you can start to see that there are quite a few similarities between all of them. Most of them have her either in some sort of like leather jacket or maybe if it's a little sexier, uh, you have her with her arms bare. She almost always has a weapon, whether that is a sword like we see here or magic. Here we have that might be a wand of some sort. And the ones where we don't see her with a particular weapon, uh, we do get a glimpse of the werewolf and moon, something that's definitely telling us this is supernatural. The lighting on all of these is center and behind our main character, who is the center of the composition. No matter what the color scheme or anything else is, she is always front and center which is going to communicate to your readers that she is your main character. Another thing that you can notice here once we have them all together is the font. Most of these are serif fonts actually and we have a few that are sans serif but in general what we have is some similarities that we can kind of start to pull together. I know not all of these are actually werewolf books but female lead urban fantasy in general. So I know that when I talk to my cover artist, I'm going to tell him that A, I want a female character who's kind of like badass looking in the center. She's gonna probably be in a static pose rather than an action pose. We have a few action posey ones. This one, this one, and this one are action pose. This is kind of not really Mostly she's just posed like she's going to come in and cause some havoc for the bad guys. We have, and look at the colors. Compared to like male lead urban fantasy where you see huge amounts of saturation with like purple and blue. The main thing here is that the light is all around our main character in the center that she is front and center and she is made to look like she is the biggest badass in town. Another thing that we can take away from this is that every single one of these covers is a photo manipulation cover. Now some of them have had more manipulation done to the photos than others, but every single one of these started out with a stock photo and or a DAS model. This one's a, a DAS model, which is like a 3D model that's been put on a background. But we kind of have like a spooky background thing going on with her in the center, photo manipulation not illustrated. Kind of like muted colors in the background. Almost all of the color and brightness is around our main character. 
it almost seems like the background is a little bit inconsequential. Okay, so now we have a general idea of what we need to put on our cover. We need a female character who is from stock photos. We need to put her in front of some sort of setting that may or may not be kind of spooky. Might have a moon in the background and some wolves, especially if we're doing werewolves. If she's just in a city, the city's probably going to be the background. It's just, it doesn't have to be exact, it's just going to be something that suggests the setting of what's happening. She's going to be in the center and she's going to be well lit and large, not kind of in the background. She's going to be like right front and center. The important takeaway from all of that is that we know we need somebody who can do photo manipulation. Now that's immediately going to rule out quite a few artists. We don't need someone who can paint. We don't need someone who is going to be doing a lot of heavy ink work or anything like that. We need somebody who knows a program like Photoshop. So how do you find a book cover artist who does what you need? Well, the same is true with book covers that was true with editing. The very best way to find a book cover artist is through the recommendation of another author. If you don't know any other authors, I recommend that you join a author group or go meet some in person, maybe at a convention or something like that if you can afford it. If none of those things is an option, you can always go to Amazon and look at the look inside of some of these books and see who did their covers. It's not uncommon for authors to list their cover artists right at the beginning of a book or even in the special thanks section that might be at the end or somewhere towards the beginning of a book. If you can't find it in the book, you can always email an author and ask. Most of them are more than happy to help you out. However, keep in mind that authors that might have 6, 10, 20 books out are obviously going to be much more well established and generally can afford a more expensive cover artist. You may want to look at people that have really good covers out but only have one or two books out. They're probably using someone who's a little bit more affordable. If you can't find anybody that way, you can try some different websites. There's selfpubbookcovers.com and creative indie book covers. Just go to Google and Google independent book covers. Look around, see what you can find. Now, you might think that you're ready to write your email and get in contact with the artists, but not yet. First, we're going to look at our budget. It's important before you talk to anybody that you know how much book cover you can afford. It's kind of a waste of your time and a waste of the cover artist's time if you're emailing somebody who charges 600 bucks for a cover, but you've only got 150 bucks to your name. Know how much a cover artist charges. You can often find this out either by contacting them directly or by going to their website. If that doesn't match up with your funds, then maybe look at a less expensive artist. You're probably not going to be able to afford the best of the best right out of the gate. And remember that you can always upgrade your cover later. There is absolutely no reason why you can't just upload a new cover later on down the road. And in fact, you should be prepared to update your covers as time goes on and expectations for covers in your genre may change. If your budget is tiny, when you first start out, Take a look at pre-made covers. You can often find Facebook groups where cover artists will post their pre-mades exclusively to the group for a few days before they make it available for sale to the public. Those are a great way to get a deal. Oftentimes, cover artists will charge up to twice as much for a custom cover. I think most of the cover artists I use charge upwards to about $200 for a custom cover but you can often get a pre-made cover for around a hundred bucks. Once you think you know who you want to work with and that you know that you can afford them, go ahead and send those emails out. Ask them about payment plans if you are short on cash, but you know you have cash coming in. Most cover artists are pretty accommodating. And if not, oh well, save up the money. A really good cover is worth investing in. I can't emphasize enough how important your book cover is. It is literally the most important part of your book. How much should you expect to pay for a book cover? That's going to vary wildly between genres. A fully illustrated custom piece of artwork is obviously going to cost more 
than something that's really simple photo manipulation. Something with five or six people on it is going to be more expensive than something with just one person on it. The more complex your cover is, the more you can expect to pay for it. For a cover like we were looking at, with one person on the cover, a background, some colors, some blending, and, and some basic options done, I would expect to pay all oh, about $125 to $200 for a pre-made, and anywhere up to $600 for a custom cover. I would definitely expect more from the custom cover. I wouldn't be surprised to pay it from a top artist. The average price for an urban fantasy photo manipulation cover, like the ones I was just showing you, runs about $250. And even if you can't afford your cover right now, but you know you're going to need it in the future, I would go ahead and book a spot with the cover artist. Most cover artists are booking six months to a year in advance, and often people will spend four or five months writing a book only to start looking for their cover artist right after they finish the book and then they find they have to wait four, five, six months, even a year, before they even get the cover. It's going to slow you down significantly if you wait until you finish the book to commission the cover. Another reason to book the cover as soon as you start writing the book is that you can often lock in lower prices. Now, prices will always go up as book cover artists become more and more in demand. But if you book it ahead of time, you're gonna lock in the lower price before they raise their prices. And that's gonna save you quite a bit of money. Okay, but what about budget sites like Fiverr? I've said it before, I've said it again. Do not use Fiverr. Now I say this as someone who's actually used Fiverr to get about 12 covers. In using an artist on Fiverr, I had very simple things that I wanted and very specific instructions. I also purchased the stock photos to make sure that they were legitimate. The biggest problem with people on Fiverr is stolen artwork. There's a whole community of artists that are there that are just stealing pictures from like Google search, cutting it out really quick and slapping it on another stolen image. Here's the problem with that. It's a thing called copyright. They don't own those images and neither will you. And guess who gets stuck with the bill if you get caught violating copyright? It's not going to be the artist, it's going to be you. Which is why you have to be absolutely sure of the source of those stock photos. For me, the best way to ensure that is that I either work with reputable cover artists that I know really well and have found through recommendation, or if I'm working with someone new, it's very common for me to purchase the stock photos myself. And it's not because I don't trust the artist. It's often just because I know exactly what I want. Sometimes it's just easier that way. But if I was working with someone on Fiverr, I would definitely purchase all of the images myself, which is actually going to make the cost run up quite a bit higher. And I do not recommend it again for the same reason that I don't recommend finding an editor on Fiverr because those artists are having to jack up their prices to make up for the fact that Fiverr is taking a large portion of their income, not to mention the copyright problem. It's just better to avoid something like that. Okay, you have your artist. You can afford them. They can do what you want. Now what? Now oftentimes the artist will send you a cover brief that you have to fill out. One thing that you should not expect is that the person who goes on your cover, the stock art that's used, is probably not going to look exactly like your character. Now there are some artists who are really, really good at doing head swaps and kind of Frankensteining images together to get something close. But the image that you have in your head is very likely not going to show up on your book cover. This is just simply because there are limitations to things like photo manipulation. If you have a specific thing that you really, really want on your cover, then it's best to just do custom art. But like I said, that's going to cost you a ton. And if it's not in line with what's generally on the covers for your genre, it's kind of just going to be a waste of money. One big mistake that I see indies make with cover art is exactly that. They want the person who is in their book it has to be on their cover and he has to be wearing this outfit and he has to have this, 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 this. It has to look exactly like their main character. No, it does not. Your book cover is basically a giant ad. Its job is to make the book look attractive to readers. It's literally there to attract readers. 
That's it. Does it look really cool? Yes, then it's doing its job. Okay, enough about that. What do you put on the cover brief? Well, that's where your mood board comes in. You're going to go back and you're going to look at it and you're going to say, hmm, I'm writing a female lead urban fantasy about werewolves, so it needs to have a badass chick on the cover, probably with a weapon or magical hands, depending on which one is in your story. It's going to have to have something that says it's supernatural, whether that's wolves or a big moon or a magical glow. Something in there has to tell your readers, hey, this is supernatural fiction. It's not just badass chick with sword. That's not enough. You need to have some sort of magical thing in there. Again, look at the fonts. What type of font is often used on the covers that are like the book that you're writing? Let your cover artist know. The more details you can give them, the better off you're going to be. The more satisfied you'll be with the end product. And if they give you a cover design that doesn't line up with your expectations, don't be afraid to ask for revisions. Oftentimes, a cover contract will tell you you have so many revisions. Take advantage of as many of those as you need. And if it costs a little bit extra to get the cover that you really want, I say go for it, as long as you can afford it. General rule of thumb, just like editing, is get the best book cover that you can afford. But EA Copen, you're saying, my werewolves are different. My badass chick with a sword is different. I don't want to cover just like everybody else. Well, hate to say it, but tough taters. You're just getting started. You can break all the rules you want when you're Stephen King, but you're not Stephen King. For right now, when you put out your first couple books, follow the rules until you're big enough to break them. The more rules you break when you're making your book cover, when you're writing your book, when you're advertising your book and putting together the blurb, the more things that you change and make different, the harder it's gonna to be to sell your book. That doesn't mean it's impossible. I don't think that anybody should go back through and change stuff in their book to make it more marketable. That's a mistake, don't do it. I'm just saying, if you're gonna write about vampires on the moon, fighting mechanical werewolves, it's gonna be a lot harder of a sell than if you're just writing badass chick with a sword works with werewolves to solve mysteries. So just be aware of that. I mean, write your book your way and just kind of get your expectations in line. General tips about covers and colors. You need to have a basic understanding of color contrast. If everything on your cover is purple, nothing's gonna stand out. Now I say that as someone who has a book cover that is all purple. There's way too much purple on this cover. And if I could go back and do it again, I would have had some more contrast around the main character. Probably put a different color glow around him. Now this book, it's my best selling book, but there are still things I could have done better. That said, be aware that there are certain tropey colors. For example, urban fantasy in general is kind of purple and blue. You might see a little bit of red in there, but red usually indicates vampires. Uh, science fiction is really blue. You see a lot of blue and orange in science fiction. And in fact, this is sort of uh, yellow blue. It's very high contrast. I love this cover. Unfortunately, it doesn't really fit the book, so it's actually getting changed. But you get the point. Contrast. It's your friend. It makes things jump out. Between these two books, which one jumps out a little more. It's it's this one. As much and as much as I love both these covers, there are things that could be really improved on both of them. While we're going over examples of problematic covers, let's talk about black and white covers. Well, when I first started publishing, I was really into like Nor. Nor is very dark, shadowy. I wanted covers that were mostly black and white. I asked for that, and the artist did an amazing job with what I gave her to work with. I didn't know what the hell I was doing. As much as I still kind of love this cover, there is nothing about it that's going to jump out and sell the book. Now, this series has since been rebranded, retitled, and re-released. Um, 
and the new cover is actually really great. I made the mistake when I first put this out. I thought this would be good. There's absolutely no color on there except for red. Uh, and this book is not about vampires. It's actually a werewolf book. So that's a problem. It did not live up to its job of telling the reader what's the book about and then selling the book to readers. Everyone who saw this book in person was like, oh, is this a vampire book? And for the longest time, I couldn't figure out why they were saying that. Uh, because there aren't any vampires in this book. Now, there are there are in the second book, but this one has its own problems. Almost nobody can figure out what the heck that steak was. It looked like a carrot. But the reason people were saying, oh, it's a vampire book, is because of all the red on black. It looked like vampire romance because we have, you know, the, the main character is kind of pale. She's got the red lips. We've got red on black. It just, it wasn't, it wasn't good. Black and white covers do not pop. People spend all freaking day on the internet looking at black text on a white background. You need to give them something different if you want to catch their eye. Black and white just ain't going to cut it. The other thing is you really need to live up to readers' expectations. Do not put a wolf on a book that is not about werewolves, or you're gonna get angry reviews. If you put a girl on the cover in a schoolgirl shirt and skirt, that better be an Urban Fantasy Academy, or you're gonna attract the wrong kind of readers and they're gonna be dissatisfied, and they're gonna leave you one-star reviews, all because you didn't get your book cover right. Okay, next topic. How do you save money on book covers? Should you make them yourself? No. But let's talk about why you shouldn't be making them yourself, yourself and how you can save a little bit of money when you're booking a cover with a professional cover artist. One, the KISS principle applies. Keep it simple, stupid. The fewer things that you put on your cover, the fewer stock photos it's going to be. Some artists charge by how many photos they have to blend together for your cover. Pick one main character, one background. All of these, all of these are one person, one dude on a background. This is literally two photos and then some brushwork that was done. The Lazarus Codex covers cost me about a hundred dollars each. Um, I paid somebody 60 bucks to put them all together and I bought all the stock photos myself. That's another way you could save money. If you buy the photos yourself and you really just need someone to kind of blend them together, they might charge you less. The simpler the work, the less you pay. I mentioned this a little earlier, but pre-mades. Pre-made covers often cost less. Now, like I said, they may not exactly depict the character in your book, but if it's close enough and it communicates what the reader can expect to find inside the book, eh, good enough. Buy it and get it out there. Buy the pre-made for 85 bucks instead of the custom for 250. You can save a lot of money by doing that. And then later down the road, after you've made your profit and made your money back, then upgrade to the $250 cover. Another easy way for you to save money on your book covers, skip the print. Now, I know it's gonna be tempting. You really want to hold that book in your hand. It's really nice to have, uh, but you don't need it. And to be honest with you, print books don't sell quite as well. Go ahead, get the ebook out there making money, and if the ebook sells enough copies to justify paying for a print cover, which is gonna cost you more, because you gotta pay for that spine and the back cover. The artist is essentially putting together two and a quarter covers for you. So you're gonna pay more, quite a bit more usually. So get the ebook out there. Make some money. If it sells well enough to justify print and audiobooks, then you go and get those covers. Don't spring for it all at once. It's, it could be a waste of your money. Imagine you put out this book, you pay $250 for the ebook cover and another 100 bucks for your paperback edition. So you spent 350 bucks on this book. Not to mention probably the 600 bucks you just spent on editing. You've got a $950 book that you put out there and sells three copies whoops. Now, imagine if you'd bought an $85 pre-made. You put it out there and it sells cop only three copies. Yeah, it kind of sucks that it only sold three copies, but you're out a whole lot less money. 
I would not invest in a print or an audiobook cover or any of the bells and whistles until you know that you have a product that people want, that you can sell. Just get the ebook cover for starting out. You can always, always, always upgrade later. Another way that you can save a good amount of money is some of the same principles for editing apply to book covers. Maybe you can trade to get what you need. Can you edit a book? I'm sure that there are cover artists out there who are also writers. Say, hey, I'll edit your book for me if you make this cover for me. You might have to wait a little while because you're going to go to the back of the line. You're getting free work, but it's worth it. You're getting a free freaking cover out of it. Can you build websites? Maybe you can build a website for this person who's just getting started as a cover artist and they'll make you a book cover. Maybe you can find someone who is just getting started and doesn't have a large client base yet. Oftentimes, they're willing to do covers for two to three people just getting started for free or next to nothing. Now, you may not get expert level covers from this newbie artist, but get the best cover you can afford. If all you can afford is to pay somebody 50 bucks, you're gonna get a $50 cover. That's just how it is. You're probably not gonna get a $600 cover for 50 bucks. Check your expectations. If you get that book out there with a $50 cover and it suddenly makes a hundred bucks, you've got 50 bucks you can reinvest in it. Save back and upgrade to cover again later. Okay, should you make your own covers? I said no earlier, but there are exceptions. I know quite a few authors who have made their own covers and have gone on to have really great covers. All of them have some background in Photoshop. Most of them were artists before they became authors. A good hefty portion of them spent a year or two learning Photoshop before they ever put out a book. If you are good with Photoshop, if you know what you're doing, if you've had professional training, go ahead and do your own cover. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that if you know what the hell you're doing. But nine out of 10 of us authors, we don't know what we're doing. If all that you can do is slap a couple things together and paint, don't do it. Don't do it. It's hobbling yourself before you ever get started. Your book cover is too important to half-ass it. Do it right. A crappy cover tells a reader what's inside is crappy. Is your book crappy? Is your book awful? Did it take you five minutes to write? If the answer to any of those is no, then you need to invest in a decent cover. You're a professional. I don't care if you've got 50 books out or five or one. If this is your first book, you're a pro. Act like it, put on a decent cover. You don't wanna put your book out there naked. Put a good cover on it. Your book is worth investing in. Your career is worth investing in. If you treat this seriously, if you treat it like a job, then it's gonna love you back. Almost every full-time author that's out there that's making 50, 60, 100 grand in a year, it's because they started treating writing and publishing like a full-time business. And you can too. It's really just a state of mind thing. I know it might feel like, oh, I've only got, you know, 50 bucks to invest in this book. How do I get it out? Um, the simple answer to that is going to be, I would put the 50 bucks aside and uh, add five bucks to it here and there until you've got enough to put together a book that is worth putting out. I would rather wait two years to put out a good book, one with a decent cover, good editing, something I can be proud of, then put out a shoddy half-ass project today. Always focus on quality over quantity. You can do it. I absolutely believe in you. Okay, that's all the time I have this week. Thanks for watching. And if you want to learn more and catch the next video, which is probably gonna be about advertising, make sure you hit that subscribe button and I will see you next week. Bye-bye.